a childhood vaccine to autism was based on false information. Now, before the release of that study, less than 1% of kids were not immunized for measles, mumps, and rubella. But after that study was released, that number jumped to more than 2% in the year 2000. Joining us this morning to discuss the new findings is Dr. Elizabeth Hansen. Good morning, Dr. Hansen. Morning, Amy. Thanks for having me. Yeah, nice to see you again. I, I just want to get your reaction. I mean, they're calling Dr. Andrew Wakefield's original study fraud. What is your reaction to that? Well, I guess it's nothing terribly shocking to the scientific community. For years, really, it's already been discredited among physicians and scientists. And last year, when Dr. Wakefield's um, medical license was revoked in Britain, um, some of this data had already come out. But I'm glad that um, the media has gotten the attention of this story, and it's becoming um, more and more common knowledge amongst the public. Because this is a big deal for parents. I consider myself an educated parent, yet every time I go in to have my child immunized, I get a little bit nervous. Is that? Do you think that this new study that says it was false data will change how parents feel about having their kids vaccinated? Well, you know, I certainly hope so. I mean, right. I mean, every parent just wants to do whatever is going to be best for their child and cause the least amount of harm. And this is more information that one of the worries that MMR is potentially related to autism can be forgotten and parents can feel comfortable vaccinating their children. Mm -hmm. uh, do parents immunize their kids here in the La Crosse area? Um, yes, I, I do not know our exact vaccination rates, but at Gunderson we range around the 95th uh, percentile or 95 percent in terms of total vaccination for the primary series, which is through um, the kindergarten vaccination series, which includes the MMR. Mm -hmm. You know, the, another thing I wanted to ask you about is I had to ask uh, what, what was the name of the original researcher, Dr. Wakefield, uh, but he really isn't a public name where celebrities, for example, Jenny McCarthy is, and she is a very, very outspoken advocate for not having your kids immunized. What's it going to take for people to change their mind? Do you need your household celebrity names to, uh, to stop speaking out against vaccines? You know, I think that the scientific and medical community needs to counter some of that um, press and um, how vocal that community has been. You know, um, Ms. McCarthy is a mother of a child with autism. And, and um, unfortunately, when there is a diagnosis that we can't say exactly uh, how it is caused, um, false information sometimes becomes held as a belief. Um, and, and she's been quite, quite vocal. So I think it's on some level, you know, really the responsibility of the medical community to counter that. And, and we're getting better and better at doing that. And as more and more information comes forward, um, such as this recent article, uh, that's helpful to get that message out also. But I'd just also like to say that this um, was, you know, really from a public standpoint discredits the original study, but there's been many, many, many scientific studies done since this original study that have really disproven any link whatsoever between MMR and autism. And Wakefield's original study only looked at about 12 kids, and those other studies have looked at you know, hundreds of thousands of children. So again, we already felt very, very comfortable that that data was not valid. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, Dr. Hansen, thank you so much for joining us with your reaction and uh, talking about uh, some thing that many people across the nation are talking about this morning. Thanks so much. Thanks, Amy.